I did forget that it was red. The yeah, car was red at one point, right? It looks so good red, man. It did. It looks so good. This is just another metal fender. Like, this is just another stock wagon body. So I can take this one off if I want, but I don't know how it is underneath. Yeah, it's fully cut out underneath, so we'll leave that one on. Yeah. Right now, what I'm doing is taking these stock rubber bushings out. We're gonna put solid bushings in, and then to fit up the rear grip kit that just I made, we have to make modifications to the subframe. That entails cutting out um, part of this webbing structure of the subframe to move these pickup points up and down. And it has like a like a custom plate to uh, with a bunch of holes that relocate your uh, your control arm pickup points. So gotta cut that out put that in. I'm going to powder coat it a super cool color. I don't know yet, but the boys are going to decide on that. But, you know, just good old times with pals, you know. Let me get a hammer. Look at that. Cheap Shot. hammer. Cheap hammer. So yeah, I'm going to set these on fire, walk away as Mike says, and then solve all the sleeve off. Saws all in and just cut it out. That bushing will just look poof and fall down, and then you just saw us all out because this has a cup in it. When you put a solid bushing in, you need to you can get the bushing out, but you have to cut the sleeve out so that you can put the bushing in. Right. I did this on my subframe without burning it. It was a disaster. Just wear you just wear yourself out because you're just like smashing with a hammer. <laughs> Where's the wieners? Roasting. Where wieners. are the wieners, Jack? Think of the lack of effort we've had to do. We literally set them on fire, a couple whacks of a hammer, let this sit. We're gonna go for lunch, come back, and we'll all be cooled down and cut them out with the saws off. Look how easy that was. So one slit, little air hammer. You don't you have an air hammer. The surface. I didn't even nick it. Dude, look at me go. Maybe a little bit, but <laughs> we just clean that up and then we're gonna press our new ones in. So what'd you happen. say, we're making our own bushings? Yeah, cause uh, now that we have this, our boy Dilly can measure this out and it's a super easy to make piece. Obviously there's tons of pieces that you guys have to make already, but something like that is a straight piece of aluminum. The ones in this are two halves. So the two halves go in together to make one whole one. I want to raise the subframe up. So it's just gonna be one longer one that goes up to the top here. Cause we just want it flush here. So it can go in from the bottom, so flush. So we'll make them for all four and then the diff ones too. Yep, and these back two diff ones. Gotcha. And then that would be a full E46 like subframe version. Messy job. Messy job. Working on old 2000s cars. I'm assuming it would get sandblasted first because it'd be nicer for Kyle to make his modifications on. <laughs> no. No? <laughs> but it can. It can go get sandblasted, so it's just cleaner for Kyle to clean some shit up. That one's done. The front subframe, there's no modifications that need to be done to it. Just want to coat it. Easier to coat that one than it is the one that's in the car and we just swap the subframe quick. I know they put really nice valve covers on it, so I'm excited to see that. This is our 427 Texas Speed NA power plant that didn't quite make it in the container. And I think we were this close. We just shipped the car and this just arrived. But the good news is we also forgot a spare power steering pump and the rear tow brackets. Probably a couple other things. So we're going to ship it all in 
either this box or one very similar to it to Ireland. Pop it open, Josiah. Blast it open. What's this? That's the heads. There's no heads around it. We got the PRC heads. We got the LS7 4.0 CID tall boy intake. Oh, that's the intake. Okay. Yeah. Because it's banded. They're going to have... Oh, dude, look at the map that it's on. It's on a full engine cradle. That's bolted to the skin. Definitely leave that in there. Well, we need to put our cart on it. But this Even gives us an opportunity to powder coat the cart yeah. and make it look nice. What do you think, think they're well Dude, look at those ports. I don't want to take the plastic off, but... But you can still take it's nice. the wheels out and it'll sit on, like, the... Look at that jazz. Yeah, you could, like, which is better. True. Woo! It looks, the same. it looks pretty tall, dude. Yeah. to tell them what's up yeah what are you doing dude i'm scanning the floor because uh we want to make seat brackets the uh, bmw chassis is really popular to put aftermarket seats in and they're really easy to mount bucket seats so what better way to take advantage of our wagon than to make seat brackets for it so we got a bunch of uh really nice dnd seats coming in for this car there's only one way to mount them and that's with super sick fbf seat brackets so that's what we're whipping up right now I'm gonna scan the floor. Dylan's gonna whip something up. Maybe Josiah will get in there and we'll make some cool CNC C brackets, you know? So, yeah, just another day in the life. You didn't see anything, okay? I didn't make a single mess. Look, it's clean. What do you have to say about this man? Well, I mean, he was just complaining last week about how much of a write-off his area was, and he always complains that other people leave it messy. And then he goes and drum, dumps like 15 gallons of water all over the place. It's cool with that, actually, you idiot. This is the uh, full three-inch stainless exhaust, and it's actually it's excellent. The welds are amazing. We're going to replace this with three-and-a-half-inch titanium. So it's going to be a lot lighter. It's going to sound way cooler. So if you want this, hit us up. Don't actually hit us up. It's going on Kyle's car. shipping scale so we can get a before and after? Yeah, I'm going to go weigh this. Okay. Come, Jack. Oh, my. 30 pounds. Uh, it's 69. Want to hold it? Yeah, 69. I say 45. So 20, 20 pounds. pounds. This is 20 pounds? I'm a weak little Colin and I are back. We're back onto the car. We got some. Dude, grab one. Nice. We got some crossing swords. Kyle. We got some tubes that were laying underneath the car to replace the old ones. They were a little beat up and rusty. They were just mild steel. They work. These tubes are for the rear radiator setup. So that's what we were are replacing. The old tubes were a little rusty and stuff. We're going with some thicker aluminum now. 
It was all dash 20 before, so we're keeping it all dash 20. Vibrant as always. Jack can go to the table, sent us a bunch of good stuff. My man Art always hooks it up. So we got some stainless line. Fittings are epic. I just wanna like hold it in like a baby. Like they're huge, the dash 20 fittings. They're pretty intense. We need to find a dash four to like put them side by side to like show actually how large they are. Yeah, we're playing with these tubes. Kyle and I are just mocking it all up in here, seeing where it's easiest to get the fittings on. Because obviously when I show you the size of the fitting, the wrench head size is like, huge like inch and a half right wrench head inch and a half wrenches are like this large so you want to be able to get it in an easy to access place so that's kind of what we're playing with right now just uh picking each other's brains and seeing what works good because we both work on cars a lot so it's kind of good to get other people's input but we're going to start with sections i should have brought more too but this is all i got and we got a decent amount of lines so we just want to have disconnection sections a feed and a return from the front and then the rear. These are just gonna be our midpoints and then the fittings are gonna be our disconnections. When we bring it down, we can show you in the engine bay where the lines are gonna go on and in the rear where they're gonna to go to the radiator so you can kind of see where we're aiming to. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Making some stuff with, with the boys here, just refreshing stuff. That's the whole point of this thing. It works really good, but we're just cleaning stuff up, refreshing stuff. We have a bunch of goodies from Vibrant for it bunch of fuel lines and we're gonna do it all in sections so today rear rad lines is what we are playing with so let's get to it We are making uh, AN lines for the um, cooling system on this BMW. So we have dash 20 um, AN stainless braided line here. We're gonna run this from the engine to the rear of the car. So we have a ton of line here. I'm just putting these fittings on. Really simple, you know, working with AN lines, you just slide them on and screw them up. I'm getting them mocked up so I can put them on the car and then figure out what length I want, cut them to size and put fittings on while Mike is fabbing up the center section. So I'm choking myself on like that. And then down there, even the same kind of spot. I just don't want to go too. Dude, check it out. A little bit better than the old one. Couple boom tubes. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't leak. Oh yeah. Some little gusset plates on them. We got our nice fat vibrant fittings. All the goodies, man. Easy. Don't even have to think hard. Just five feet, something like that, four and a half, five feet to span the whole middle of the car. And uh, yeah, we got the front lines. We're just measuring up that last one. And then we just got to do the rear lines. And that's a day. It takes it like, it's not super fast. It does take time still, but it's easy. It's not like hurting my head <laughs> to like figure it out, right? Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Little angles just to like. You'll see when we get it back in there. I'm gonna clean all the Debras out of it and uh, hang it back up in there so Kyle can put his sections and we made mounts to the chassis. So it's pretty solidly mounted in there, so it should be good. 